Hey guys, welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest channel and podcast. If you have not subscribed yet and you are on the podcast platforms, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, let's go ahead on YouTube and hit that subscribe button and that like button. It's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. We just want to go ahead and brighten up the place. And let's get into this conversation. I've discussed Meghan Markle and Harry. I'm not even going to call him Prince Harry anymore because honestly, it's like you left the royal family, so I'm not even calling you a prince anymore, period. Because you want it out, you're out. So you're Harry (laughs) and Meghan is Meghan. Save the titles and all that other crap because for me, I feel like they want their cake and they want to eat it too. I'm going to actually read someone who is pretty much on Megan's side in this situation. I'm going to read this article and then I'm actually going to play a clip from Unwind with Tasha K where she was discussing Meghan Markle and I really found it refreshing because I haven't really heard her talk about Meghan Markle and Harry too much, but I want to read the commentary of someone who is for what Megan is doing and I want to play someone who is not me, what they see, and and then I'm going to share my thoughts on the situation. So the Netflix documentary has has been released. I have not watched it yet, but this story, it actually comes from Madame Noir. And it was written by someone named Nala Abdul Rahman. And the article reads, Megan warned us why it's important she tell her story. Well, the the article reads, it seemed almost too uncanny that news broke of the racist incident at Buckingham Palace that resulted in a royal aide resigning just prior to the announcement of Harry and Megan's docuseries on Netflix. But it instills a notion that many refused to acknowledge publicly that Megan was right, that the crown was a problem. Even after the revealing Oprah interview of all she had gone through during her time as a working member of the British royal family, she remains a polarizing figure in the media, still wholly never believing her struggles until others start to experience them too. With Netflix's drama, The Crown, releasing a new season, this recent bout of racism and Harry and Meghan's show trailer debut, it seems the British royal family has been in the hot seat of the media for the past few months. Even players of the Boston Celtics seemed unenthused by the courtside appearance of William and Kate at their recent game. The cracks in the grace and professionalism the late Queen Elizabeth exemplified during her reign began to resurface, showcasing that the firm still has much to learn about how to approach the world and deal with race relations in a modern era. This bridge could have been built upon the introduction of Meghan to the family, but instead her short time as a senior member took a dark turn. What occurred in her time since leaving the firm only further confirms the microaggressions and more blatant forms of racism Markle experienced. For a royal aide to question a black guest about her nationality showcases how the royal family still dictates those of a different race as other and not one of the many ethnic groups that make up the United Kingdom, especially England. If a royal aide could make such blatantly racist comments in public to a guest, what else has been said by those with more power behind closed doors? It's an ongoing problem within the outside within and outside the black community, where we refuse to validate women's experiences, expecting them to be jovial or complacent in their misery. It's a plight the Duchess of Sussex refuses to accept, instead breaking the barriers that forbid women from speaking up about their mistreatment. With her new joint media venture with her husband, Prince Harry, she is able to take charge of the narrative that once consumed her. Megan was forced to fit into a role that wanted to stifle her voice while also allowing her image to be vilified for the sake of those closer to the throne. Her identity as a mixed race American woman only muddled things further, allowing for massage noir 
to take over in the media circus. Megan deserves the opportunity to share her side, especially when she's been trying to speak for years about the racism she's endured at the hands of who were supposed to be family. Megan's story is a lesson for everyone to believe women, black women especially, the first time so that greater trespasses never occur. Now to that, I'm going to just share my thoughts on this article, what this woman wrote. Megan is not a victim. She's an opportunist. And here's why I say that. I'm not saying that there are not racist people in the royal family. I'm not saying that there were not racist people who were working in the palace or wherever they were living or wherever they were working. There are racist people all over the world. We know that. But Megan never identified as a black woman. She even said on her podcast that she never knew what it was like to be treated like an African-American woman until she got with her husband when she started dating him and people started seeing her as this black woman, even though she doesn't want to identify as that or be seen as that and didn't feel, feel that she was seen that way because she was a woman who lived her life passing. I have said this over and over again, and I may not have said it in that specific way. And honestly, I don't care. I'm not here to say I'm upset because she lived her life that way, because I don't know what it's like to have parents of different ethnicities. So I can't tell someone how to feel or how to live their life who is in that situation or who was born that way. But I am here to say that you're not the only one and you lived a life of, you you got a step up. You are living a life of privilege being married to Harry. I'm not calling him Prince anymore because he left the royal family. But she really was expecting them not to see her as a black woman and they did. And I'm not here to say that they were wrong for doing so. I'm not even here to say that the person who made the comment where they were questioning someone's either their racial heritage or where they were from or something like that, that's actually not uncommon. We are going to be hypocrites if we say that someone who doesn't look like someone that they they come into, let's say they come into this space where pretty much everyone there is milky white skin. And then someone comes in of a darker, darker skin tone that's not a question that is uncommon. Honestly, it's the tone and how it is asked. Now, if someone just says, you know, like, who's this black bitch or, you know, <laughs> you know something like that, I'm not saying it's funny or, you know, or, or calling someone a, de- a, re- a derogatory name or word because they look different. That is absolutely not okay. But we're going to be disingenuous if we say that, that doesn't happen. And it's just because as human beings, we naturally are curious creatures. If you are driving past and seeing a, an accident, it is human nature to turn your head and look to see what's going on. Rarely will someone just keep driving by and not look at it at all and not be curious as to what is going on. And When you see something or see someone that may look different from you, you naturally are going to think those things. Does someone always come out and say or ask? No, not all the time. I've had, I've had people that have asked me, you know, and even who are African American themselves, they will say, don't take any offense by this, but where are you from? I don't take offense to that. Someone else may take offense to it because people naturally are curious. And Megan coming into the royal family, I'm sorry, she just is not like them. She's not. We've heard the stories about how they have done inbreeding over the years in the family to keep the so-called blood pure and not, and all, you know, whatever, whatever they call it. But... 
those things could be true. They may not be. I don't know. I'm just talking about the stories that we've heard. Megan coming into that family at this point in time, she just wasn't ready for it. But she also wasn't wanting to be seen as different. She wanted to be seen like Kate Middleton. And she's not. So does she have the right to share her viewpoints and how she feels that things were when she was over there? Everybody has the right to share how they feel about something or how they feel something went. So yeah, she does have the right to tell her story. I'm not even knocking her for telling her story, but it's the way it's coming across. It's a continual sympathy party. Join us in our pity. Join us in our sympathy. Be sorry for us because I was inflicted to these uncomfortable situations when I'm sorry. It's no, it's not okay for someone to make someone feel low or feel less than, but it's up to you how you receive it. It's up to you to, on you, how you move forward in spite of those things and not allowing what people say and do to dictate your life. And obviously she's done that because she said, you know what, I want out of this. She has a husband who listens to her and he said, well, if you want out, let's go, let's do it. I want out too. And he left. He didn't leave her. He left with her. So I would say she should be grateful and be happy versus continuously playing on the emotions of people to make a a buck or not even a buck, make a hundred million bucks. (laughs) So you're in a place that you were never in before getting with him. So honestly, instead of using this situation to have us cry a river of tears for what you went through, you should be seeing it as stepping stones that, you know what, I didn't like how I felt. I don't believe I was treated in a way that I deserve to be treated. So I decided to leave. And you know what, that's my past. And now I'm moving on and I'm moving forward. But for you to continue to talk about the situation in terms of wanting the general public to feel sorry for you and to hate the royal family, it's tiring. It is old. It is very annoying and frustrating. Just live your life and move on because those things may have been rocks or bricks thrown at you, but use them as stepping stones instead of stumbling blocks. And for me, it seems that she wants to use them as both. She wants to have them as stepping stones. She's definitely using them to come up, but she also wants them to be seen as stumbling blocks so that people will feel sorry for her. Because here's the thing. Those who don't like her are never going to like her. Her continuously sharing her story is actually going to piss people off more and make them hate her even more. Now, I don't think she really cares so much because she's just going to continue to do what she's doing for the sake of the dollar. And that's exactly what they're doing because they don't get the money and the protection that they would have gotten had they stayed in a royal family. But that's the choice that she chose to make when she said, I want out. And it was her right to say, I don't want it. I didn't, I, I didn't want to stay in this. And she got out of it. But the royal family has been around for many, many years. She should have done more of her research in terms of the way things were going to be when she was there and how she was going to have to live her life and, and, handle the different obligations that they have to handle. But even with all of that being said, it's still a life of privilege that many people would have killed for that she got. And that's why I think a lot of people really don't like her. It's because you got in a position that a lot of people would kill for and all they really see you doing is complaining. And it gets old. It gets really, really old. So I'm going to find this clip of Tasha K talking about Megan and Harry. I watched her last Effery Friday, and that's <laughs> F-U-C dash Akari <laughs> Friday that she has when she does her live streams. And she talked about these two people, and I was extremely shocked because I never expected her to talk about these people, but I was like, wow. It, it was refreshing to hear her her viewpoint on it. So I'm going to play this clip. Meghan Markle, 
listen, listen. I, I, I didn't want to have to do this. I didn't, okay? But one thing I am tired of, one thing I'm tired of, of uh, it's just, it, it, you know what this relationship is giving me? Listen, I'm all for people finding uh, 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 love and everything like that. What's going on? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. It's a lot of people saying the same thing. Okay, everybody's good? Let me know if the stream is good. I just want to check because, you know, they'll let us know. Okay? All right, so we're good. Listen. So, um, you know what this relationship is giving me? It's giving me white man. It's giving me very colonial. I'm, I'm, I'm getting colonial, colonialism vibes for here, okay? I'm getting that the royal family thought that this was going to help leverage, okay, all of this they've been doing for centuries, destroying, you know what I'm saying, nations and, and tribes and, and countries. And this was supposed to be the bridge, okay? This was supposed to be the bridge. Now, hold on for a second. And the reason I'm saying this is because, you know, I, I'm all for people finding love. And whoever you love, by all means, please love hard, okay? But this is just getting put too much in our face. It's like there's an agenda behind it. I don't see the authenticity no more. What I see is victim and I see savior. I see victim, I see savior. I see him trying to save her because he couldn't save his mama. Lord, forgive me here for a second because we're about to get into some wine. Y'all have no idea. We're about to, we are passing on behalf of Jamal Bryant today since he wants to retire and grow weed, okay? That's what we are doing. All right, let me pawn up the communion, okay? Because I'm, I'm, this is giving me, this is giving me little boy, okay, Mrs. Mother, Okay, he saw some attributes of his mom and his wife, married his wife. Wife took on the spirit of the mother because she knew how well Diana was loving. She knew she had to embody that spirit. So I wouldn't be surprised if this heifer don't watch videos on Princess Diana. She done embodied everything she done had. Just the leverage. Leverage, just, I'm talking about the, this is the Lifetime Bag Award, okay? The Lifetime Bag bag of bags of bags and she left her family everything that she knew and she clung onto her husband she did look and grab your bibles and turn to uh, uh psalms okay 13 6 13 6 okay it says when a hoth findeth a husband she shall honor him in all her ways, okay? Honor. She shall do away from everything that she knows and take on the ways of her husband, his cloth, clothes, boxes, and all, okay? That's what the scriptures say. And she's embodied all that, documentaries, books, podcasts. And I, I'm, I'm asking myself this. I'm asking myself this because y'all, how do y'all have time to love each other when you working on a podcast, movie deals, book deals, turn? When do y'all have time to screw? And it's given, it's given, they're trying to make colonialism okay. She now saying that she finally took a, 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 a genealogy test or whatever you call that. She 45% Nigerian. Well, well. Now, this woman done lived, done came from a black woman. The woman is black as me. As black as me. The, the mother is as black as me. Okay? And they had her dressed like she was from the handmaid's tale at the wedding. Y'all don't, listen, y'all, listen, I was trying to be quiet on this. I really was. But since they want to throw it in our face, I'm going to throw it back. I'm about to throw it back. Okay? Catch. Catch right now. Okay? Catch it. Because, 
Everybody else dressed exquisite. Mama got on, what's the name of that damn movie? The help shoes, the, the help hat, the help bag. Okay, what is going on? Hold on for a second. I think there's something wrong with the stream. Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure y'all was good. Okay? Mama dressed with the, the black handbag looking like, ma'am, ma uh, we, we were going to church today. I'm taking off today, and we're just going to go to church, and I'm going to see my daughter get married, and I'm going to be right back to take care of Miss Ann. Miss, a Miss Annie, I'm going to get her dressed for school and ready. That's how they had the mama looking. That's how they had the mama looking at the wedding. I I, I didn't want to say nothing. I didn't. I did. But I was just like, you know what? I, I can't be quiet for much longer. And the more they keep dropping documentaries, the more he keeps saying the reason he fell in love with her is because she wore a donkey filter. I said, What? In the documentary, Prince Harry, Colonials, said what made him fall in love with her is because she was on FaceTime and put on a donkey filter. At that point, he had fell in love. I said, see, they can't help but see us as animals. I can't. Y'all go on listen. <laughs> goes on a little bit more but you got the gist of what Tasha K said and I'm not here to say because she said it it's right I'm just here to say that it is refreshing to hear that someone with a much larger platform than I have has talked about this and I have talked about this on several occasions with regards to Meghan Markle and she's absolutely right she is living this life of victimhood and honestly most people get tired of people who live in a state of victimhood even those who deserve to be in that place because they really legitimately went through something and it's sad but it's really true someone who may have god forbid gotten assaulted by someone if all you ever hear them talking about is that assault after they made it through and they got out of it and they have overcome the situation but all they ever do is talk about the assault people eventually will get tired of hearing about it and 
although they have the right to share their story, nobody likes to hear somebody continuously talking about what they went through all the time. And I have gone through some pretty devastating things in my life. And even I have to realize when it's like, you know what, I can't continue to always mention this because one, everybody doesn't care. We live in a life in a world where people don't really care about what you go through. People want to see a come up story. They want to see someone overcome, but they don't want to see somebody constantly in a state of victimhood and wallowing in their pity. And Tasha K was right when she said, you know, she's just sitting there wanting to have people live in a state of victimhood with her. She's like, you live down the street from Oprah. Like you have come up. What? are you complaining about now? And that is what I have been saying for some time. And, you know, this is the Being Beautifully Honest channel and podcast. So I try my best (laughs) to watch my words and to say things in a different way. But it is refreshing to hear someone like Tasha K on the Unwind with Tasha K platform where she just says it how she feels it. No filter, no buffer. And that's how she said it. And she said it where it was maybe in a harsher tone, but it was the truth. She said, you lived your life as a sellout here. So it's not that people didn't embrace you. You didn't embrace the race or ethnicity that you came from because you really didn't want to live in that space. And so it it is the truth. I'm going to use someone as an example. If you look at Claudia Jordan, her mother is Italian. Her father is African-American. Most people who see her, they don't really see her as someone like Meghan Markle. They see her more, honestly, like she's just a lighter skinned black woman who has both parents that are black. You see someone like Robin Dixon, Giselle Bryant, who I don't care for either of those two, but very, very light skin, green eyes. They are people that you see more as black than you see as anything else. I don't know about Robin Dixon's mom. I believe her mom is biracial and her dad is black. But Robin Dixon, she is very lighter skin, but she lives her life a certain way. She acts a certain way. Meghan Markle, she doesn't live that way. She doesn't act that way because it's not what she wanted. And that's your choice. But don't give us the story of how you were never accepted as African-Americans by by other African-Americans because I would venture to say that those who you were around, you probably didn't want to be associated with them so you did your best to live a life where you were more accepted into a Caucasian, into the more of the Caucasian situations and atmospheres and arenas because you wanted to be seen that way. You did not want to be seen as a as a Black woman. And that's your choice. That's your choice. But anyway, guys... I really wanted to just share that article where this woman said that Megan warned us. I don't really see what this woman is talking about in terms of saying that she needed to warn us about what was going on because I don't think that anything that Megan said was shocking to anyone over here at all, especially those who are African American, but we don't we just don't really care. And I'm being beautifully honest. We just don't really care. People are living in a state of lack in a lot of places right now. Recession is going on. So many terrible things are happening in the world. Your story, Megan, is not one that's the most important. Live your life. Quit trying to reel everyone in to make us feel like you are the biggest victim in the world because even though you want to be seen that way, you're not. And we're over it. So you guys let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about the article from Madame Noir. Let me know your thoughts about what Tasha K had to say. And just let me know what you think about this overall and if you have watched the the trailer or any part of this 
docu-series that is coming out on Netflix about Harry and Meghan. And (laughs) until the next time, guys, thank you so much for liking and subscribing. And this is Beth. And I'm just being beautifully honest.